Hello and welcome back to Tinker Talks Guns. A bit over 40 years ago, Detonix introduced us to a production subcompact 1911. And people keep making them to this very day. There has to be a reason for that. One of the reasons for that is they have an excellent trigger. And yes, they're comparatively low capacity and for the most part quite heavy. Now, I took it upon myself to rectify some of these failings in the latter-day Detonics, and you can find several videos about that on my channel, so we won't get into it too much. Others have a different approach. For example, the RIA BR 3.10, which is a subcompact double-stack 9mm 1911. And um, it's interesting, and we're going to get into that. Now, before we do, I'd like to shout out to my Patreon supporters. All of this costs money, guns, ammunition, everything. And your contributions help. Even modest contributions add up. So, if you'd like to support the channel, and me, uh, there's a link to my Patreon below. And you can click that and kick a buck or, month, or two a month, my way. It helps. So, the BR 3.10 is a relatively new gun, and it is a steel frame, double stack 9mm, very much in the mold of a smaller version of their full size double stack 9mm. And um, they are reasonably priced for what they are, but it does have a couple of glaring issues. Uh, the first of which is, it's a freaking brick. This thing is heavy. It weighs 36 ounces. And for a modern gun, that's a lot. You can, if you choose to, with a good gun belt and proper good well-designed holster, carry this reasonably comfortable if you're even of average size or larger. But the question is, why would you? Well, several reasons. First, it has a 1911 trigger, which means it's good. And it has a short reset. And that allows you to rapid fire more consistently and more accurately. It has excellent sights, which are fully adjustable. Fiber optic front sight. Dirt admission holes in the slide. I, I know that's not their function, but they are to lighten the slide and look cool. They also do a fairly good job of letting you press check the gun. As opposed to simply putting serrations on the front of the slide. So, you know... They're not useless, and in the real world of civilian concealed carry, if these are a problem, you're doing it wrong. Um, so, let's, let's get into this on the tabletop in a little more detail. The BR 3.10 is a compact gun. Um, it is 7 inches long. In length, but three quarters of an inch of that is the beaver tail, um, which seems longish to me, but hey, what can you do? It's also a bit over five and a half inches high, including the adjustable rear sight. And here's the thing this is a thick boy. Um, I didn't actually measure how thick, but yeah, it's thick. Let's have a look. Okay, now we've let a look. It's an inch and a half thick, which seems excessive and frankly could be, there is room to adjust that with the grips, but not by much. Uh, it does have features like an ambidextrous safety. <laughs> oh, I've been handling too many guns. It does not have an ambidextrous safety. And I kind of wonder why. Um... And of course, in 1911 fashion, this is not ambidextrous either. So pretty much unless you fit your own ambidextrous safety, this is a right-handed gun. 
Um, it has a nice modern skeletonized trigger. And again, all of the things you'd want. There's some nice checkering on the front of the frame and a nice checkered flat mainspring housing with just enough of a break to take the edge off. And that's kind of nice. Uh, the magazine well is not beveled, but I would argue that with the magazine this tapered, it doesn't need to be. Grips look like some kind of plastic, maybe G10. Skeletonized trigger with an over-travel stop. It has, of course, in the way of subcombat uh, 1911-based guns, a bull barrel, which appears to be the same RIA bull barrel that I used on the Latter-day Detonics project. It also has a um, interesting recoil spring assembly. So, this is a chunk in the hand. I mean, and it's an inch and a half thick. And I dare say that if you have smaller hands, you are not going to enjoy this gun. Now, the trigger pull is consistently, according to my handy-dandy Lyman trigger scale, um, six pounds even, and it's very consistent. But it is, there is a little take up, which is not a bad thing on a carry gun. And it does break very crisp with no over-travel. And the reset is 1911 short, which means quite good. And as I said earlier, this does a great deal to facilitate accurate rapid fire. Now, this is typical 1911 in a lot of ways. You take the magazine out, which I've done, line up the notches, and pop this puppy out, which I have not done yet. And it is inclined to be annoying. Okay, I got it out. So, this comes apart exactly as you'd expect. And here is your recoil assembly system, which is not captured, you will note. And of course, the recoil plug comes right out, and then the barrel removes from the front, like a 1911. And as you can see, nothing unfamiliar there. The barrel is just over three inches long. Chambered in nine millimeter, it has a full support chamber and a full ramp, which I approve of. Now, the recoil system uses this piston and two springs. And the interior piston actually protrudes from the front when the gun is in recoil. And that is a seemingly decent and much used compromise for very short guns and very large calibers. Very similar to the SIG P365 and other Colt-based guns of this ilk. But it has an issue. When you get the gun, it is thoughtfully provided with an extra set of recoil springs. And the injunction to replace them every 500 rounds. Now, for a lot of people, 500 rounds is more than they will fire in the lifetime of the gun. But for those of us to whom 500 rounds is a pittance, that's an issue. And I cannot help but feel if your recoil system is wearing out in 500 rounds, you're doing it wrong. Now, in a three and a half inch gun, you can use a flat coil single recoil spring with a conventional guide rod. I do not know that that's true when you shorten the barrel by a half an inch. So this may simply be the best they can do. But honestly, I don't care for it. I cannot help but think there is a better solution. Actually, I know what the better solution is, but it involves a slight redesign of the barrel and slide and we're not going there in this video. Reassembly is typical 1911. Put things together, slide them in place, and reinsert the recalcitrant 
slide stop. Run the slide back and push it in and you're ready to go. So sights, as mentioned, they're good. Three dot style. And that's fine. It's not my absolute preference, but it, it's fine. And um, the grips are specific to this gun. Yeah, if you are able to, if you if you want replacement grips, you're going to have to probably modify other grips to fit. Notably, the ones for RIA's double stack 1911s. So the grip safety is functional. It has a mini memory bump with some nice serrations on it. And I have no difficulty with it in use. But again, because of the sheer girth of this pistol, um, I think that people with smaller hands are going to have issues. But that's just me, my opinion. I haven't actually consulted anyone with smaller hands to find out for sure. So, there it is, the RIA BR 3.10. Oh. Okay, the first thing, I've got the name wrong. It's the, not the BR 3.10, it's the BBR 3.10. And no, I have no idea what that means. Um, these go for about $700 on Gunbroker. And they come with one 10 round magazine. And um, there's a thing with that. See, the owner of this pistol wrote to RIA, rather he emailed them, that's writing, right? And ask, hey, what about extra magazines? I don't see them on your site. And they responded with this. A nice letter, which says, Good day. Thank you for reaching out to us. We would love to assist with your concern. Our BBR 3.10 comes only with one magazine per purchase. We don't offer a magazine for this type of firearm in the market as we just recently released it. So they'd love to help you, but they won't. What might have been helpful would have been to mention that their full-size double stack 1911 magazines will also fit in the BBR 3.10, because that would be helpful. So they'd love to help you with your concerns but they don't know how because they're not familiar with their own products at customer service. I'm sorry, this I'm harping on this a bit, but it irks me. Just like it irked the owner of this pistol. So about the pistol, we know the details. And um, it does lack some features that I'd like. Like why in the name of God... In this day and age, does it not have an ambidextrous safety? Why does it not have an undercut trigger, allowing you to get a little bit higher on the gun? So large people's hands, who are the only people that are probably going to want this gun, um, don't hang off quite so much on the pinky end. And I know why they opted for the barrel cutout or for the slide cutouts instead of you know, just putting some serrations up there because they thought it would make guns sell because a lot of people think it's neato. I don't care. Um, yeah, the magazine thing is really a problem for me in a $700 gun. It, it smacks of carelessness on the part of the marketing people, if nothing else. And it doesn't speak well of their customer service that they didn't know that existing full-size magazines will fit in the gun and might make a dandy reload. Let's talk about the gun itself. We've had enough of the nitpicking, enough picking on their customer service. How's it shoot? It's fantastic. It's a short 9mm with a light, fast, reciprocating slide. Good sights. And it's so heavy... <laughs> that that helps a lot. This thing gets back on target ultra fast, like nobody's business. You know, if your sole criteria is a concealable gun that you can put hits on target very rapidly, this is going to do that. But there's a cost. The weight, 
the girth, the lack of support from its own manufacturer, the 500 round lifespan of the recoil system. As an object to take to the range and put rounds on target in a hurry and giggle evilly, um, this totally fits the bill. As a modern practical carrier carry gun, I have reservations, serious reservations. Oh, you will also note, this doesn't bother me, but it's going to bother some people. Why is somebody introducing a modern concealed carry gun with no rail for a light? You can like lights, you can not like lights, you can intend to have one, you can intend to not have one, but people want the option and it is a standard in the industry at this point in time. So, I would not buy this gun. But I'm not you. You know, in terms of function, build quality, fit and finish, it's fine. Features are a little lacking at the price point, but if you're buying a gun like this, practicality is not probably your sole consideration. It's pretty neat. But it has, as I've mentioned, some things I genuinely don't like. So, that's the BBR 3.10, and that's my opinion. Remember, this is just my opinion, it's my review, and I have a sample size of one, and that one, I find nothing wanting in its performance. I just get hung up on the details. So, if you like the video, please hit like and subscribe, click notifications, and you'll see more when they come out, and you can hear more of my opinions based on sample sizes of one. I hope this finds you well, stay safe, take care, and I'll talk to you again real soon.